I always thought that we would be out there every night after dinner, just going with epic battles. You know, when he was a freshman, he was under me and I just kind of bullied him. And then all of a sudden he grew and I'm under him and he's bullying me. He had this old man game where he just backs you down, backs you down and throws up this bull hook shot that you can't get to. Once I got taller, it was almost like, come on dad, let, let's just shoot. He was like five foot ten as a freshman, then he went to 6'7 and 6'8 as a junior and senior. So we never got to that stage where we could really just compete. My wife Jody and I both grew up here in Brownsburg, and um, Indiana basketball is, um, it's historic. Communities will rally around the gymnasium in the wintertime, they'll pack small gyms and large gyms, and for a lot of communities, um, it's the rallying cry of the whole town. It defines the state. They didn't have a league here until second grade, but we took them into Indianapolis and they played with a little mini hutch ball and a six foot goal. The coach was getting the ball to Gordon every time and actually rolling it to him so the clock wouldn't run. He's five. And after that first game, the director turned off the scoreboard and said, we're not keeping score anymore. This is ridiculous. Sports is basically our entire family. Siblings in general are always competitive, but Heather and I being twins, it's something where it's, it's more natural because you're spending more time together. I didn't feel like I was a girl and I hated being treated like one. I felt like I should hang with my brother. To be honest, they were easy, easy kids. They were competitive, but they never fought. When we were really little, we would play kick the can. So we would bring all these people over and we were serious about it. The adults were playing too and it, it got competitive, like everything, you know, and it was just one can and it was dark. She basically had a head-on collision with like a, he was probably like a 35-year-old man at the time. And Gordon was so upset that I got hurt that he took his pillow and his blanket and he laid by my bedside the entire night. Heather, of course, always went to Gordon's games and tennis matches, and Gordon came and he would actually ride with us on the bus. We went to each other's sporting events, every single one. They had a built-in partner to, you know, go shoot baskets with, um, literally a doubles partner in tennis. He played tennis. When he played tennis, he didn't focus on basketball. When he played basketball, he didn't focus on tennis. With his length, he could practically do a slam dunk with his serve and he could be at the net in three steps. It was one of those where you just step back and thought, man, where is this kid gonna go? You know, being that, that new coach, I wanted to set a goal out there, and I remember saying, hey, we're gonna be the, the first team at Brownsburg to win a sectional, and um, you know, I thought that was something pretty important. I can remember um, thinking to myself, you know, why can't it be us? Like, I don't wanna just win sectionals. I got this, you know, this email from this Gordon Hayward who I'd met a few hours earlier. His email said, hey coach, why not a state championship? That's what I want to win. He was pretty good, but he wasn't dominating. Then he grew. Our, our whole town was there for the game. We were playing Marion High School. Gets down to the wire and I think we're up two and, you know, they have the ball and uh, they hit a, a three at, with like two seconds left, whatever, 2.1 seconds left. So now we're thinking, it's over. And at this point, we're right behind the bench, and I'm trying to encourage him. Heather's like, Dad, what are you doing? It's over, it's over. And I'm like, it's not over, you never know. Well, they set up this play for Gordon to get the ball. I was covered, they double teamed me, and I remember curling and watching the ball like fly through the air, and it got tipped up. Gordon just keeps running to the basket. He picked it up right in the middle of the paint. Then he just kind of throws it up. It rattles around and falls in. And it was Bedlam. Butler was, it, you'd almost say, Coach Stevens and Butler was meant for Gordon. Academics was came pretty easily to me, and it was just another way that I could 
try to show that I was the best. I'll never forget, I heard this just loud arguing next to my office coming from the locker room. I could not figure out what it was. And I walked in there and he and another one of our players was arguing over a, an engineering equation. Coach Stevens came out, he didn't know what we were talking about either because I'm sure he was sitting in his office and we were saying all these you know, physics terms and stuff like that. I just walked in, I looked at them both and I thought, man, this is a special group. And going into the tournament, you know, we were riding a pretty big win streak. And I can remember sitting there and, and talking to one of my roommates and, and all of the guys were in there. And I was like, man, I was like, this is our year. You know, we hadn't lost in forever and we always seem to find ways to win. And why not us? Like, we can really do it. We can beat anybody in the, in the nation. I think I was more nervous for the Duke game than any of the, any of the other games. And not just, not for the reason that it was the national title game, but just because they were the most like us as far as they played together as a team. Our whole thing was we kept everybody under 60 points um, throughout the whole entire tournament except for that last game. And everyone likes to talk about the last shot, but we were sitting on the baseline. It was the play before that where he actually had a chance and had a fadeaway against Zubak. I think it's every kid's dream to get the last second shot. We had the ball and it was like, this could be our last possession. And the play basically was just like, Gordon, pop out, get the ball, and like, go to work. Singler actually played terrific defense on that. Um, took away his left hand drive, and then Gordon spun back to his right, shot a little step back on the, on the baseline. And it looked like from our angle it was right on, but it turned out to be a little long. Just uh, back rimmed, which is which is a lot of the misses I hate the most because they feel so good. It was a it was a great defensive play. It was a great offensive play by our best player. And then I got another chance, and you know we've all seen that shot too many times. So the half quarter is, you know, it's such a low percentage shot. Gordon established him himself far before that and it brought us to that point. So when you go back to Indianapolis, you go back to the state of Indiana, you go back to Butler, nobody ever even thinks about that shot. They think about all the things that it took to get there. That shot's just a part of a commercial every March. That's about all it is to all of us. The whole year, my dad was saying, you know, we're not gonna talk about the NBA, anything like that. You know, I said, I don't want, don't bother me with it. I wanna play this season out. And then afterwards, I remember he, he said, you know, we're gonna have to start thinking about this. You're gonna have a decision to make, and how do you make that decision? How do you decide whether to go, whether to stay? So I tried to educate myself as much as possible and then help him make that decision. I'm like, no, you know, you want him to go, but then you're closing a chapter in his life, and, you know, as parents, you want him to move on, but you grieve over the chapter that's closed. My wife Joey's like, he needs to come back and, and hit the shot next year. <laughs> like, no, he, like, he needs to go. 